The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs... The most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hey everyone, this is James from Cave Dweller Music. I'm here with another episode of the podcast. I have my co-host Brendan with me. Today we are joined by Angel from the band Alinea. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you taking the time. Yes, I am so excited to be here. And yes, I am Angel. I am the vocalist and songwriter uh, for Alinea. Um, we are a new progressive metalcore band from the south side of Chicago, USA, and even though we are labeled as New Progressive Metalcore, we incorporate so many different genres and inspiration and even, you know, culturistic stuff as well. Um, we don't really like to sit within guidelines and we don't really like restrictions on creating. So even though, you know, we are labeled as that genre of metal, we are incorporated with so many other things. That's great. But yeah, we love bands that kind of push boundaries and don't like to stick within boxes. So great to hear that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How long have you been uh, doing it for, like the music thing? Oh, wow. Um, me, myself, uh, I started getting into music uh, kind of seriously when I was in my early teens. And I was originally a dancer. I did tap jazz and ballet from the age of four until I was a teenager, so probably for about 10 years. And then um, I started watching a lot of horror movies and watching a lot of MTV. <laughs> and then I <laughs> discovered metal. And I said, what is this? And it completely changed my whole freaking life. And um, yeah, I started uh, digging deeper into music from the age of you know, 12, 13. And then um, I started taking it more seriously at the age of 19 um, when it became more of a coping mechanism for a really rough time that I was going through in life. And then um, it went from being a coping mechanism to kind of like a mental escape, you know, um, to what it is today, which hopefully will one day be your career. So um, I'm 28 right now. So I've been, you know, uh, pretty neck deep in music for the past 10 years. And then Alenia, um, was first called uh, Weapons, and it was between uh, myself and my guitarist. And we met around, I want to say, about 2018. And then um, we eventually came across the musicians that we have now. And uh, our drummer uh, and us, we all got together and decided that Weapons was a little bit too much of an aggressive um, band name for a band that was a lot more than just, you know, screaming about violence. Um, mm -hmm. And then we became Alenia in, I want to say, around 2019. And then uh, 2020, I would say. And then during the pandemic, we uh, released our first track, About to None. And so we've been ongoing for about the past uh, two, three years, I would say. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, really cool. And you, I, I saw that you, on your Instagram that you also do tattooing and modeling. Does that all kind of tie in together with the scene or is it completely separate? Yeah. So before I had gotten into live performing, I was a visual artist and I did a lot of like, um, you know, gallery events. I did a lot of uh, muraling and vending my artwork and just being an independent artist, putting their artwork out there. And then I had discovered... Uh, that you could have your artwork featured at live music events and being intertwined with that visual art I felt like I was even more deeper into the performance art of art aspect and then uh, it came to what I do now um, which is perform you know perform with my band but then now you know I I do it individually and independently, but also with my band as well to where we have uh, independently ran events that feature both visual artists, unique performers and live music performances as well. So, yeah, it all you're right. It all does tie together. That's really cool. Love that. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, it's about community. Yeah, that's I feel like a lot of times people are I think like when someone focuses on being within the music industry that, you know, they just kind of want to float up and kind of like forget about the ground that they came from. And I think that 
if you want a tree to grow, you have to nurture the roots of it first, you know? So I am definitely a big community-based person. Us too. Yeah, we, we, we yeah, can to give back and support and you have to. Right. Yeah, for sure. I also believe in like the give and take with the universe. So that's also a thing that I kind of abide by as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you do good, good will come to you. Yes, yes. You put out the energy you want to receive, you know? <laughs> yeah. And we've, we've talked about this a bunch of times on the show, but we always say how much we'd like to see, because I mean, you see this in hip hop a lot, um, mm -hmm. but like uh, bigger artists featuring smaller artists on their tracks or other way around, like bigger artists featuring a smaller artist tracks. And it'd be really cool to see some more of the OGs and like the metal, extreme metal sort of world, the middle world to, you know, going out, out of their way to help up and coming artists. Yeah, that would be something that I feel like a lot of us would like to see. Even, um, you know, I, I have performed with larger acts as well with Alenia. And there are some really great larger national acts or larger bands that will support and, you know, actually interact with the other opening band sets and stay and cheer them on and stuff, which is really amazing and refreshing to see. And then, of course, there are larger bands that just, you know, their primary focus is obviously you know, uh, performing and then getting to the next stop on their list, which I totally get. But right. yeah, it, it would be nice to see more of that, you know? Yeah. yeah I Stay to the that. end, hang out. Yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. they were there for you, you know? Yeah, I think that's the thing, too, is that, or I mean, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to be like too judgy on the situation, but I feel like sometimes when people get so big, you know, they forget about um, where they came from or, you know, and it's just kind of like sad to see. I wouldn't want to grow up to be like that. <laughs> yeah. And, but to your other point that what you're defending, I agree with that as well. It's like when you're on a national tour or something, you're going, 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 going like night, 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 night. Um, so I, I get it yeah. if those bands don't stick around afterwards, like they play and go, because I probably have to jump in a van and drive to the next place for the, the show the following day. So yeah, in, in they, aspects, they do I get it a lot. It. Yeah, it's just I, I've seen it, too. I've seen um, a band that I love, Dead Reckoning, to where it looked like they were touring for two months straight and it was oh. just back to back to back. And I'm like, wow, are they even human? They must be part machine. Um, so I completely understand that. I mean, the exhaustion is definitely for real, but even like yeah. on, their, on their downtime, just taking some time to like, share and support or even yes. press play to an opening band because, you know, like you had stated, like we all started somewhere. Right. Yeah. And that's, that, that's more the side of what I was talking about. Like, mm -hmm. you know, collaborating on, on albums or like sharing songs or like, you know, cause those bands have such a big audience. If they share a song, mm -hmm. say, Hey, check out these new guys. They're really cool. Like we should all like support them. People are going to listen to it because they're going to trust that band's opinion. So that's a great way to help mm -hmm. up and come as... yeah. yeah, it's something you see a lot of that in like the the hardcore scene. You know, like mm -hmm. all bands like support each other, and it's this. It's you know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would say so. spread spread that kind of love into other scenes. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, already exhausting as it is being a musician. So, like, being able to uplift each other and keep each other inspired during the process is going to make things a lot more enjoyable for everyone involved. Definitely. 100%. So tell us about your local scene. Uh, what have you got going on there? Like, what, what are some bands you should check out? Uh, what are some venues up that you like? And, you know, all those sort of things. Yeah, um, out here in Chicago, our local scene is beautiful, you know, as any local scene, you know, I'm pretty sure there's people or bands or whatever that don't get along or whatnot. But at the end of the day, like I have nothing but good things to say about my city. I do feel like Chicago is when I've traveled because I've traveled throughout the United States with bottling. I have noticed that once I said that I was uh, from Chicago, people would take a step back. You know, they would immediately associate our city with violence and just negative energy all around. And it's such a beautiful place filled with amazing artists, um, amazing musicians. And I feel like the people or the artists that are genuinely from Chicago to where we've been grown and raised in and seasoned in in the streets of Chicago we all carry like a mutual respect and understanding because we all know what hard times are like you know um, we're coming from the, the same soil so I feel like because of that we all work together very well to bring each other up and keep each other uplifted and whatnot um, now 
what we do, like I had mentioned before, and what I've done independently is coordinate, independently coordinate um, events that give platforms to artists and musicians and performers as well of any color, any type of identity, um, you know, and then also creating a safe space where people can feel free to be themselves. And what I like to do at um, any event that I'm doing is just create the space to where when, you know, like they're going through a rough time or whatnot, what is going on on the outside world doesn't matter once you come into the venue doors, like that's your safe space to, you know, have that mental escape to feel free to have fun. Because I think it's important to stop in life and just take a second to live in the present and enjoy what's around you with good people. Um, but as being one thing I would like to say that I personally would like to see more of is larger venues doing a better job to support Chicago local music. Mm. Now, I do feel as if it's the locals that really do assist with keeping venues alive and with the support and whatnot. But when it comes to booking um, or bands trying to book events and, you know, do community based um, productions, it tends that the venues will, you know, overlook it or not prioritize it or worry about more what's going to bring them money and benefit their pockets rather than, you know, being a part of helping our city grow, you know, and that's a little bit sad to see. Um, but I would love to see more support from the venues out here um, for sure. But um, one of the venues that I have worked with in Chicago um, that I absolutely loved was uh, Underground Lounge. It was one of the first locations that I, that accepted me in, in my vision and believed in it. Uh, and the owner from Underground, the owners from Underground Lounge, I believe, also work alongside or with another venue called Livewire Lounge, which is another great. Um, location that supports uh, local talent as well and with Underground Lounge it's a little bit of a hole in the wall uh, Ministry has played there back in the day Fall Out nice. Boy played there before they got famous and um, Gigi Allen played there too ah. um, Gigi <laughs> Allen New <Hampshire's> chosen son. <laughs> Gigi Allen took his shit on that stage at Underground Lounge <laughs> You know, That's so cool. even even though it's um and it's below a place called the Newport Theater where they do a lot of Dragon Burlesque, which is which is rad. Um, but yeah, I've, there's been a few musicians or people I've been around like hmm, I don't know about Underground Lounge. The stage is kind of small, but it's just like at the end of the day, as long as there's like a PA system and a stage and people that want to be entertained we're gonna fucking do it you know yeah. that's what we that's <laughs> definitely what we're here for chicago has a very um raw energy for sure we're very direct and i would say honest and we're just very about it <laughs> for sure that's great mm -hmm. it's uh that diy attitude that's never left yeah, you yeah. know what? That that's another thing too is that I grew up DIY. I grew up sneaking out of my living room window. That's how I went to my first show. There was a DIY show going down at the corner of my block. My parents were sleeping. I put on all black. I snuck out the house and I went to my first rock show. And it was like the greatest thing in the world, you know? And I was yeah. just about 13 and then, you know, I started sneaking out and going to a lot of shows, but like that's my background is DIY, but then as I grew more into depth within the music industry and seeing how things work and function and proper sounds and, you know, stuff like that, I tended, I ended up leaning more towards like a professional setting and wanting to give musicians a proper stage, proper lighting, um, you know, and give them that atmosphere that they deserve while still carrying the DIY energy with it. Um, which was a little bit tricky, you know, but it's, I think that the Chicago DIY energy that I grew up with is something I will take with me everywhere I go, no matter what arena, <laughs> what country, I'll, I'll definitely always take, carry that energy with me. Oh, that's great. Brendan, I've been talking a lot. You, do, do you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Um, well, uh, I guess like going back to, um, you know, venues and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, uh, do you have a favorite venue uh, outside of Chicago? Like Outside in, of Chicago. Yeah, or like where you're at? There is a venue I love. I've never even freaking been there. 
but I know that I love it. It's called The Rave, and I believe it's in Michigan. And wow, that place looks so freaking cool. Um, a lot of really iconic bands and performances have gone down there as well. So that's definitely one place I really want to play at is yeah. um, The Rave. Another place that I would really like to play at is probably like, I don't know, an arena, all-state arena or something. You know, a nice arena around the around the city would be cool. Um, yeah. my, my favorite venue that I do like to hang out with uh we'll hang out at is probably cobra lounge um i have co-hosted a couple events there but they're currently under new management so i feel as if they haven't been as friendly with servicing locals um another venue that i've enjoyed um was a place called reggie's uh chicago which is also a really cool place that hosts a lot of um a lot of really great shows I know uh, Reggie's actually. Yes. It's, uh, it's actually pretty famous. I, I've seen a bunch of pictures from shows there. It looks awesome. Yeah. And they have like three, they, they renovated their second floor that used to be their record shop into a comedy club and intimate performance venue. So now it's like three venues in one. And plus they have a rooftop too. Um, Alenia's a uh, sound engineer. His name is Ben that works at Red Hawk Productions. Shout out to Ben. Uh, he's assisted Alenia with a lot of our sound stuff in the past. And he's also ran sound for all of the independent events I ran. Uh, so we appreciate him dearly. He now uh, is a sound engineer saving lives at Reggie's Chicago. So <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, what about writers for our site? Uh, review shows from Reggie's every so often. He's based in Chicago. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. He, a lot of great shows. Heard, I don't know if you know his band is called Eve Black. Eve Black, yes. Oh, I've I've had the pleasure and the honor of um, working with Eve Black. I just oh. seen them perform a couple days ago. I was a featured artist at one of their events. Uh, yeah, I've had a great time booking them. I've performed with them as well. Um, they're really great guys. I love their their music. Um, and then the drummer is also an old friend of mine as well. And uh, the drummer Hector was actually cool enough to fill in for us for one of our events at Otep as well. So we got mad love for Eve Black for sure. A small world, there you go. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, to, uh, Tom from Eve Black uh, rides for our site. Yes, Tom is the boss for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Sorry, Brennan, I uh, hijacked your question. Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> didn't mean to. It's all good. Um, uh, before when we were talking, um, before we hit record, um, mm -hmm. you were talking about we were talking a little bit about uh, shows and whatnot, um, and you had played some all ages shows, and then obviously like there's adult only shows. Um, mm -hmm. Is ha is there a major difference in what do you like about each? Okay, yeah. So um, one of the first all ages shows that we did was at a venue called WC Social, and it was headlined by a really great band called Sepsis, another really awesome national act that I've never seen a national act support local talent the way Sepsis does. Um, and then the event was co-headlined by, by uh, Matra Morta, which is another amazing band that's uh, female fronted metal, and they're currently playing Michigan Metal Fest. Um, that show was all ages, and it was really cool being able to just, like, see the younger generations and being able to interact with them. Um, we also did another community-based uh, event that we had the honor of headlining, which was Villa Palooza. Um, and that was a very community-based event that was uh, actual – it was a, a stage built in a garden. Um, so And it was, like, under the stars, and it was just so cool cool um you know like i said interacting with the the younger generation and just feeding off of their energy and then we did another all ages show which was the shows that we uh performed with otep and um specifically performing at the hubbard art theater uh in a place called hubbard indiana uh, it's more of a small town, you know, so what they love to do out there, it seems as if like that theater is where they go. It's like where all the metalheads are going to hang out, where everyone's going to go on a Saturday night. 
and just seeing like you know small town people and and the younger kids and stuff like that being able to have that space and mosh around and rock out it was it was really cool you know um being Mm -hmm. able to you know i was in situations through the all ages shows with otep where i had younger girls and stuff coming up to me and telling me that they love their performance and they felt so inspired and empowered and badass you know and it was really awesome you know to to have that dialogue with them and tell them like hey like i'm up here like girl that could be you too you know yeah Um, pass the torch yeah you know and it was like really awesome just being able to even like meet them and speak to their parents as well and it's just so cool it's a really um intimate i i do believe all ages shows like you know they offer a little bit more of like a one-on-one experience so it's a little bit more of an intimate thing um for the adult shows that's where the recklessness comes in (laughs) you know um definitely uh alenium plays with all different types of it because we incorporate so many different genres we play with all different genres of bands um but i'm the type of person to where i love high energy and people are there to have a good time. They're there to be entertained. So that's what all of us are going to do. So we tend to perform with very uh, intense and or theatrical bands as well. So, um, you know, like there'll be moshing, there'll be drag performers, um, there'll be burlesque, there'll be um, DJs and like people dancing on the floor, just having a good time um, through our sets too, because we've used trap beats, we use you know, classical riffage, and we use a lot of everything, you know, new metal influences, progressive, so it's really cool to, like, to see the way people move to the music, and it's cool to, like, I I love that diversity of, you know, just dancing, and also being able to mosh and kick and go crazy, Um, you know, so I would definitely say that the younger audience and stuff like that, that's going to be more of an intimate one-on-one experience, you know, of course, you know, we definitely, like, aren't going to want to be swearing on the mic, you know? Um, there's a, a lot more order to it, but, like, the good kind of order. And then with the all-ages show, it's just buck wild. <laughs> yeah. Buck wild. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's good. Balance is good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who uh, inspired you to uh, sing? Was that something uh, at, like, an early age or, like, who got you into it? I never wanted to sing. I wanted to be a lead guitarist. I had no interest in being a front woman. I just wanted to be a lead guitarist and like exert that masculine energy. And uh, I still play guitar, not as much anymore, because I feel like, you know, my current guitarist is like so brilliant. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I can't keep up with this guy if I tried. Um, but I do have the goal to shred with him on stage one day. But um, I started getting really into, you know, like singing and stuff like that and learning that I could utilize my poetry and my writing and my thoughts in general. And honestly, I'd have to give that up to Otep. Um, She was the first, you know, like female influence that I had to where it felt like she created a space that I didn't even know was there. Um, And I remember I... The first time, too, that I knew I wanted to start a band was after I seen The Runaway. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I, I want to start a band. Um, but <laughs> yeah, definitely Otep. And then I would also say Behemoth as well. Um, I would closet sing a lot all the way from when I was a child up until I was 19 until I realized I can't closet sing anymore, you know, and then I just started caring less and started singing louder and more, you know, I would lock myself in the bathroom for long periods of time just writing songs on the bathroom floor and I, yeah. as much as I wanted to discard what I was writing and what I was feeling and telling myself that you know I, I don't think that this is for me or that I could do it I just always felt like I needed to it was like a, a compulsion you know and then I would go to local shows and stuff and I would just feel the energy and just feel as if like the stage was a magnet and it was pulling me closer um so yeah I've sang my whole life I just never told anybody and then at the age of 19 I started taking it seriously and yeah uh, lots of music videos and definitely Otep (laughs) nice yeah that's awesome Mm -hmm. um so you never did any kind of lessons after that like when you started you just uh 
do it? Um, yeah, I just did it. It was a lot of uh, listening to because a lot of my vocal inspiration it comes from a lot of like old school jazz, and then it, it comes from a lot of black metal. So I brainwashed myself with tons of black metal because even though I like singing to myself and whatnot, and you know, like having that ethereal energy, I also felt that I wasn't expressing the darker essence of myself and I felt that like all right maybe I should learn to you know let it out in like you know a demonic form and yeah um, yeah it was lots of listening to Matane uh lots of listening to Behemoth um yeah uh atmospheric black metal uh I love things from you know like sounds from other countries too um, but yeah, lots of black metal influences on the heavy vocals. And then the clean vocals came from more of an ethereal, softer side with jazz influences. So yeah. Right on, right on. Um, what has uh, been your favorite city to visit? Um, wow. Okay, so I would have to... That's so tough because I every time I travel, I fall in love with every place I visit because I think that they all have something significant, you know, and I have a significant experience within every place I visit. Um, my favorite place to go is New York uh, in, in Jersey to Brooklyn. I really love the East Coast so much. The energy, the yeah. people, the, the music, the art, just all of it, the energy everything being connected by bridges i love being near water there's water everywhere you know it's it's a beautiful time new york was definitely my favorite place to visit but then i also visited seattle and i fell in love with seattle as well <laughs> everything about it yeah who's well what city's got the better food between the two Oh, wow. So I am a very huge coffee fiend. Uh, so okay. Seattle, uh, <laughs> I mean, New York has really great food. Uh, Boston had really great food, too. I like their seafood. Um, but the coffee, I could survive off coffee alone. So Seattle could take the cup for that. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I work, I'm spoiled with coffee. Um, the brewery I work for is also a coffee roaster. So like, Oh man, we just have awesome fresh coffee all the time. So I'm like, it's just so hard to drink other anywhere, anything else, you know. Yeah, you're living the life of a king. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> um, what is your favorite hobby outside of music? Oh wow, that right now my favorite hobby outside of music is reading. I've been reading a lot right now. I'm currently reading Louder Than Hell. It's literally like the undefinitive uh, history of of metal, and I am a believer that you have to know your history or else you're going to be doomed to repeat it so right now i'm really <laughs> big on books and comic books and then uh you know i'm an artist too as well so uh drawing and illustrating and stuff like that uh, i'm a really big book person i believe that like outside of music uh reading is one of my favorite escapes and coping mechanisms nice what do you usually draw or paint or what do you how do you create art um, so I like to work in grayscale, which is black and white. Um, so it's a matter of finding inspiration, uh, finding a quiet place in my mind, and then just drawing or painting or creating whatever I'm feeling at that moment. I try to teach myself and guide myself with the, you know, with the important note that it doesn't always have to make sense. Um, and just to go with what I feel. And to like, you know, not not everything in life needs to be so goddamn technical and critical. And sometimes it's okay to not overthink, you know, and just let art happen. Yeah, of course. You don't pre-plan your time with art and put it into categories of 15-minute blocks. It's like, today, I do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And and I use, um, I, I journal to... So I use a journal and then I use a digital organizer and then I use a, a physical planner and I try to break up my week into what days I'm going to do what and try to keep wow. it organized. Um, you know, and it, it does get tricky at times. 
but then you know like there's days and I believe that every artist has days where they just like don't it's just not happening and that's okay Mm -hmm. that's your body telling you to rest and I yeah you gotta take a break yeah I feel like artists especially myself too like when creating or writing or singing or performing or whatever you know like we get tired and then we guilt ourselves for being tired and it's okay to just chill out (laughs) you know if I have what I try to do and that what I would advise other busy creators to do is if you make this long crazy ass list just pick at least three objectives three primary objectives to complete and then the rest to be pushed to another day if you need to rest so it's uh, oh sorry I didn't mean to cut you off there oh no you're fine go ahead I was just going to say my wife and my therapist agree with you. I uh, <laughs> that uh, I overcommit myself constantly, and uh, mm-hmm. basically that like what my, what my therapist suggested, which I haven't tried yet, and I'm supposed to, is if you're listening, I'm sorry. Is that uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's not? Uh, is that of it. you're working? <laughs> she's a Taylor Swift fan. She's not going to be listening to this. Um, <laughs> is that uh, you're supposed to basically? allocate set amounts of time per day and then mm-hmm. put those into blocks and that actually limits like how much you put towards those projects that are too time consuming that you owe it commit to so like you give yourself an hour and like in an afternoon okay there's a four hour window i'm going to do an hour of this hour of this an hour of this and then after that i'm going to rest and i'm going to stop working on things that aren't like relaxation focused mm-hmm. and then yeah try and work through it like that and then that kind of keeps you on track more to actually let yourself have free time and not over commit to a project yeah i i think that's easier said than done exactly (laughs) exactly (laughs) that's why i haven't done it (laughs) yeah Yeah. definitely easier said than done i think it's important to like when you're creating to be honest with yourself and uh it gets really hard because like sometimes i'll take on objectives and i'm like oh yeah i could totally handle this this is fine and then, like, a week later, I'd be like, why did I sign myself up for this again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me all <happens>. the time. <laughs> it's tough. It's definitely tough. You know, mm-hmm. like, um, like a few years back when, like, everybody had all the time in the world, right? I mm-hmm. was like, oh, I'm going to become my son's Boy Scout leader and, or Cub Scout leader, right? And then, like, yeah. so I'm doing all that stuff. And now, like, as time's gone on and everything's just picked back up, to kind of normal Mm -hmm. i'm like oh my god i have to make time for this i have to make time for that and like it's a lot to do you know like in charge of all these like kiddos like trying to like get them to like do projects and like ultimately they always have fun but there's times where i'm like oh my god did did i fail tonight you know like i feel like i'm just like not doing enough and then like sometimes when it happens i'm like i'm just like oh my god i totally forgot about this thing and like uh now i have to scramble and you know Mm -hmm. yeah we're it's wild but (laughs) yeah yeah so it's definitely important to take time for yourself you know yeah i feel you as well because apart from being like an artist musician a model and whatever else uh i'm also a mother too (laughs) And um, I totally understand what you're saying, you know, there's always like that little sense of guilt, you know, and it gets hard to stay on top of every, okay, like period, we're only human, we're not perfect, you know, of course, we're we're flawed by design. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so one thing I want to ask about, because most people I've spoken to from Chicago talk about this is the quality Mm -hmm. of the food scene. Mm -hmm. So is Chicago what people say it is? Is the food fantastic? It is delicious. Um, The food is the best because it's such a a diverse area. You have so many different diverse food. Like, are you in the mood for Thai food? Are you in the mood for, you know, Hispanic cuisine? Are you in the mood for Italian food? Um, You know, like we have a Greek town out here, too. So whatever you have a taste for i promise you that we got it (laughs) so it's very easy to uh lose track of money out here (laughs) it is (laughs) expensive not as expensive as new york or or california but it's expensive especially when the food is delicious and it's on every block like you're gonna be so tempted to spend money (laughs) yeah i know um... oh go ahead oh no i was gonna say is that uh what i've been doing lately like my wife and i will go out and like 
if there's like a concentrated area where there's a bunch of different restaurants, we'll get like an appetizer and a drink at one and do keep doing that at like three or four different spots, you know, like, so yeah. you get to like, it's, it's, it's pretty fun, you know, instead of just getting stuffed at one place and leaving, you know, like you get a little break in between a little walk here and there, you know, it's, it's cool. Yeah. That's the way I like to run my dates too. I like, I like a variety. <laughs> yeah. What about the pizza? Is the deep dish, do you, are you a fan was, of the deep dish? I was about to ask that too. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> the, the pizza is good. It's so like, the thing is, is that like when I eat pizza, I just get really tired and I want to go to sleep. And no matter where I eat pizza from in Chicago, I get really tired and then I want to go to sleep. It's so thick and there's so many calories and cholesterol. It's greasy, but it's delicious. Um, I've The worst pizza I've ever had was actually in Salem, Massachusetts. It was one of the first places that I traveled to, and the pizza was just the worst pizza I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I live like two hours from there. Yeah, their their seafood is awesome. The the pizza, not so much. <laughs> yeah, the um, the best pizza is in uh, Connecticut. Okay, noted, noted. <laughs> it's that New Haven style. Got Some it. argue that New Haven style pizza came before New York style pizza. Oh wow! You guys uh, ran so everybody else could walk. That's what it was. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I know you had some I, questions about uh, alcohol as well, Brendan. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, you mentioned um, you were a bartender. Um, what's your favorite drink to make? And what is the most common drink people ask for? Um, I feel like the most common people, the most common drink people ask for is usually like an old style. Um, my favorite drink, I, well, I'm from Chicago, so I love Malort. And I know everybody else hates it out here, but I love Malort. And then my favorite go-to is a gin tonic. I've had a lot of people tell me that I drink like an old college professor. <laughs> like maybe <laughs> I was in a past life. But yeah, gin tonic is definitely my favorite. Nice. What's your favorite gin? Um, right now, I like Hendrix gin. I can't really... Well, it is expensive, you know? It's, it's a little... Yeah. You know, but I'll, I'll usually take like Bombay. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's I safe. like um, Hendrix mm -hmm. better than like the dry style gins. Have yeah. you had uh, Empress? Uh, yes, I have. I'm not that big of a fan. <laughs> but yeah, Hendrix would be my go-to. If I could drink it, you know, and have that as my primary, like, I totally would. But, yeah, nice. A oh, gin and tonic, some cucumber. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's it's botanical. So, I, you know, like, the girls that identify as fairies and magical creatures, they should most definitely be drinking gin. <laughs> it's magical. Yeah. <laughs> So funny. Um, I was going to say, going back to uh, music a little bit, mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite song to play live of yours? Uh, so uh, my favorite song is Apocalypto. That one is my favorite because I feel like it's the song where I could be most unhinged because I wrote it and like I designed the lyrics to be unhinged because I wanted to have that self-expression and other people you know I wanted the song to where other people could feel that expression and feel like it's okay to be unhinged as well but um we currently have a new song that we wrote called Nexus and um we performed that one at our last two events with OTEP for the first time and now that one has uh become my favorite song to perform just because when I had written the lyrics to the song and whatnot, I was going through a very hard time. And um, that song, I don't know, just performing it, it reminds me of my hardships and how I've been able to overcome it and stuff like that. And the song is also a bit of uh, mental health awareness as well. So being able to perform that and have that connection with the audience um, you know, it, it, it hits, it, it really hits heart for me. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely important. You know, we, um, every May for the last few years have been doing a uh, mental health charity compilation. So that's awesome. Uh, next May, 
if you want, you could probably donate the song and or do a new one, whatever you want. But yeah, be pretty yes, cool. absolutely. So um, yeah, to give a little bit more um, background out of that, the song hasn't released yet, but I could definitely send it to you guys to have a, a sneak peek. Um, it's a song that talks about having to heal from betrayal, but then giving in and into the darkness inside of you and you know just owning that anger owning your emotion um it's about not wanting to live but then being reminded or reminding yourself of your worth to keep fighting um Mm -hmm. yeah and and it's about love and trust and anger and it's it's about a lot of things that people feel every day so i'll definitely send it to you guys for a, a sneak peek apart oh, yeah. From, yeah not to get too too personal either a, apart from like a, within my family losing loved ones to self-harm um you know i suffered through depression and self-harm stuff like that when i was a teenager and um yeah i've i've done a lot of self care and i use art as my my coping mechanism and my outlet um and so does my um our bassist as well and then our guitarist you know we all advocate for mental health awareness because that's something that we've all experienced at one point or another absolutely it's it definitely affects everybody one mm-hmm. way or another yeah, you know, and it's it's friends, cool. loved ones, whatever it is, yourself, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's cool to, you know, I feel like a lot of times within social media, other artists and stuff like that may not want to betray a realistic image for people to relate to because, you know, they're there to entertain. But me personally and with within Alenia, we do our best to be transparent and to be honest and we want to be able to remind people of what realism is and that they're not alone and being able to provide that Mm -hmm. you know being able to provide that for our audience means everything to us we rather you know like be honest and make that connection and remind them that they're not alone and who they are and what they feel is completely normal absolutely it's amazing that you're using your platform that way it's great yeah (laughs) We, we do we do what we can, you know, and we just we ride the waves. I feel like a lot of artists may not know or feel the security of is what I'm doing right, is what I'm doing wrong, what should I say, what should I not say, and I think it's just important to be yourself and the right people and, you know, the right organizations. The, you know, I feel like the right people will find you and you'll be a, so much happier with what you're doing and your music if you just be honest with yourself and you know keep it real with your people absolutely absolutely i feel like there's enough cookie cutters out there to you know fit the industry one thing that like we say and we advertise with alenia even when we do independent ran events is that we like to say that we're made from something different and we're made from something real and so are the people that we uh support and work alongside is there a name for like the event company that you have, or is it just through the band? Um, so right now uh, I have it under Voodoo Masochist Presents, which is just my Instagram name. It's not my name okay. or an alter ego or anything. It's just under Voodoo Masochist Presents. But um, we're eventually going to be, even though like with these events, a lot, Alenia has been a huge part of them. Um, when it comes to our EP release and stuff like that, we're going to be doing productions under Alenia Presents as well. Okay. Brendan, do you have any uh, anything else you want to ask? Um, in, you know, I think we're pretty good to go. Cool. All well, right. <laughs> I, I have uh, I've got one more for you, and this one's going to put you on the spot a little bit. Okay, I'm ready um, for it. Okay, so if you were trapped on a desert island and you had yes. nothing but a solar powered discman and three CDs on repeat that you could listen to until you got rescued, what would uh-huh. you want to have with you? Um, three cheers for sweet revenge by My Chemical Romance um oh my goodness i uh oh my goodness i don't know what other song i mean what other i don't know you can take your time it's no problem it's, it's a tough question yeah <laughs> it is um well i don't know about cds but like for artists um if i had to have free artists um mm-hmm. 
let's say I had to have either that or free artist on my on my iPod, which I still use religiously. Okay. Um, <laughs> it would be Otep and My Chemical Romance and definitely Behemoth. <laughs> Okay, interesting. A good mix. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I actually went back and listened to Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge for the first time in like several years uh, earlier yeah. this year, and I still really enjoy it. I I hadn't listened to it since I because I loved that album when it came out. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was great, but it holds up, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another one too would be Judas Priest. Got to slip some Judas Priest or Creator on there for sure. <laughs> yeah. <Nice. laughs> good mix. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, uh, just to finalize everything here, if people want to listen to your music, support any of the, the things that you do or follow you anywhere, what are the best places online to do that? Um, so we can be found on all social media platforms and our music can be found where it's able to be streamed worldwide. Um, so you can find us on Instagram at alenia.chicago. You can find us on Facebook typing in Alenia Chicago. YouTube, Alenia Chicago, and our music is available um, for worldwide streaming. If you listen to our music and would like to have it for free, you can hop on Bandcamp and search Alenia, and our music is available for free download as well. Um, our next event, live music event, will be at a place called Fallen Log in Chicago. That is part of a awesome place called Kitchen 17. And we will be playing on September 23rd as part of a after party, free party actually, for um, a really great fest that's headlined by Luna 13 and Priest called Be Afraid of the Dark. Um, so yes, uh, all over. Uh, our music is available for streaming and free download. And um, yeah, our next event is in Chicago at Fall and Log on September 23rd. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate you taking the time. Hell yeah, yes. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me and for letting me ramble. <laughs> no problem. That's what we do too. So. <laughs> and for everyone at home listening, thanks for tuning in and uh, come back next week with another guest for you.